Hello, uh, welcome to the J Mirror channel. This is a chapter number three, correlation and parameters in J Mirror. My name is Anthony Jimenez, and this is the agenda for today. First, we are going to the basics, correlations, uh, then we are going to use these correlations to get parameters, and then we are going to execute the the script and validate that everything is working as expected and finally we're going to take a look on the test plan basic elements that we are going to use in this script to make it works okay what we made in the last session in the last session we made the recording um, we sent some requests to say uh, server give me home page and the server give us home page but at some moment when we are going to to uh, to sign in to the server, we send a request to the server. Hey server, give me a session ID. And the server says, okay, your session ID is going to be ABC. Uh, the browser in this case stores the value ABC and uses for later uh, requests. And then in later requests, it uses the ABC. And the server says, yeah, your session ID is validated and accepted. Remember that we set up a proxy in the middle, uh, meaning in the middle, um, which recorded the request that we sent from the browser to the proxy, uh, forwarded to the server, and recorded the response. We have that recordings in JMirror, but if we play it, if we execute it right now, we're going to send, okay, number one, give me a session ID. We send the request to the server. The server is going to give, say, okay, your session ID is going to be X, Y, Z, but I have uh, started or I have hard coded right now the script to use the session ID ABC. So the server is going to say, um, hey, I deny this session because I don't recognize it. I don't know what is ABC. I give you XYZ and you are not using it. It's not going to work. Okay? So the challenge of the correlation is, okay, I'm going to send, get me a session ID. The server is going to say, okay, your session ID is RST. I'm going to correlate RST. I'm going to use RST in the following request. And the server is going to say your session ID is validated and is accepted. Okay, this is the challenge, uh, but it, it, it works for all type of dynamic data. Uh, for example, if we have uh, uh, different profiles that probably could choose different options, a drop down that is populated dynamically, correlations works there. That's the challenge of a performance engineer identify where correlations are needed and put the correlations in there. It's not just correlate token, out, out IDs, session IDs, no. That's basic because that's to make the script works. But the real challenge is to make all the dynamic data works. Okay, let's go to the script. This is the same script that we made in the last session. I just finished some of the transactions. Home page, login, find flight, reserves, flight, payment details, itinerary, and logout. I keep the numbering, and in here we have the, um, the original recording. So anytime you like, we can go to those values to validate the information the information that we that we got <coughs> okay i'm going to play the script this is a, the same script that i recorded nothing has changed everything is the same is the default so uh, if you take a look we, i have a view results tree in here into the thread group and I have another view resource tree that is from the recording. So that's why I put the words recording to identify it. And this is execution. Okay. 
I'm going to play the script and the, the information, the responses is going to be displayed in this one. Okay, let's go to the responses. Um, it's pretty much some data. If you you are not in JMeter, probably uh, reading HTML is not easy. You can set up here in the in the um, in the drop down. You can set up to view as HTML. It's easier for you to read HTML because it's like reading a web page instead of reading the HTML code. I mean, with experience, you're going to be able to read it as text <laughs> in the future. But if you right now are in trouble to uh, to 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 read it, use the HTML viewer and you will read clearly. Okay, what we have here, we have you have reached this page incorrectly, probably bad user session value. What is this? This is my response on of the 11th request. Let me take a look of the response in the recording. In the recording in the 11th, what I get? I get nothing. That's not bad. Let me take a look on the 13th. Welcome, Jojo. Web tours, whatever. Let me take a look on the 13th. Oh. You can see here that welcome is empty, and in the last, in the eleventh, bad session value. Okay, let's take a look on the request. First request, second, third, fourth, eighth, eleventh. Okay, in this request we have user session, and this user session is this value. I'm going to find, as I tell you in the last video, I'm going to find this value in the in the original recording. In the original recording, you go to the viewer, go to search, click on search, and you will know where in the script you got the value and where in the script you use it. Okay, because the search works in request responses and also in headers. This is awesome. So um, I need to correlate this value. I need to correlate the user session value to be used. I need to correlate it in the seventh response to be used in the eleventh request. Okay. What's the way to do it? The way to do it is to use a regular expression extractor. I'm going to um, uh, use regular expression extractor and the way it works is with a regular expression. The regular expression works in groups. I'm going to find the first group and you need to put um, the group. In this ca case, I'm going to use the group number one. Uh, you need to put uh, braces. This is way to find the value that is between um, okay. in here is by denying some of the assets that you have it and then looking for everything else into the um, into the regular expression. This is the, the easiest way for me to grab the values. You can use any regular expression that you like. Uh, there are so many tutorials uh, in the web to, to create your own regular expression. Um, this for me is the best because you are not going to see this character until it ends. So I'm denying. Until you don't find it, grab me all the data. And you can test it. The way to test it is pretty easy. You just click on regular expression in here and click on find. As you may see, my regular expression right now is working. So what I have to do, I need to go to step number seven or the request number seven, 
click on Add, Post Processors, Regular Expression Extractor, and put my regular expression. I regularly put uh, the reference name or the variable name, the same name of the parameter I'm using. In this case, I'm going to put user session, user session. I'm going to get the first group. Uh, I'm going to get the first value or the first occurrence. And regularly I put no value or not user session, find it. What I'm going to find it? I'm going to find it in the body. That's right. Yes. I need to take a look into the body. Okay. Here. I need to take a look into the body and the values in here. Um, what else? You can set up if you want to search in the main sample or in the main and the sub samples. In this case, I just want to use it in the main sample. And the way to use the, the parameter, that the value that I have already correlated, is pretty easy. You put the dollar symbol, then the braces. I think these are flower braces. And you put the name of the parameter that you are using. In this case, it's user session. And that's it. That's it. And I have already correlated the value from the seventh request, the response from the seventh request to the eleventh request. Um, okay. I'm going to replace to validate. I'm going to keep this value to compare that I have already fixed it. But I'm going to to add something. Because if you took a look, uh, it was pretty fast. Uh, I haven't had any ching time because um, in the past recordings, uh, in the past Jamie reversions, <laughs> the recorded used to record the timing that you talk uh, between steps and add it to the script. Right now, they 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 don't add it. They don't add the ching time or waiting time, which is. Great, because you have the opportunity to add it. So you go to the timer and go to the best that I, well, the not the best, the one that I use most is Uniform Random Timer or Constant Throughput Timer. In this case, I'm going to use Uniform Random Timer. And if you remember well, I told you in the last video that Jmeter use a hierarchy to, to, to scope uh, the group into a test plan. In this, I'm going to set up a uniform random timer, and the random timer is going to affect all the transactions, and all the transactions are going to affect all the requests that we have in here. If you check a look, the uh, HTTP header manager is per request, because it changes. It changes some of the values of the Header are, are different, so that's why they are below, below the, the, the request. So if you put in here, it will affect all the requests. So that's why I'm going to put at this level the uniform random timer. I'm going to set up 250 uh, milliseconds and delay offset of 250 milliseconds. Okay, I'm going to play. If you check a look, it's not that fast as last time. I'm going to the request number seven. Uh, I'm going to compare. It changes. Yeah, take a look. This is the value. And in this time, the value is, is different. And the response of the 11th is empty, like the recording. And in here we have welcome Jojo. It's amazing. It's working. But remember, so far we have just made works the login. Some of the steps probably are with hard coded data that we need need to fix it. If you take a deeper look, um 
here reservations. We have a depart city and arrive city. We have some date. What happens if I run this script in one week after one week? The date is going to be outdated. So it's not going to, to be valid. Um, I have some values like album flight. So this value probably was was retrieved by the server with um, some data valid on, the, on, on this time. So we need to correlate all of this data to make it work like the script like forever <laughs> or at least as many as much time as possible. Okay, so we have different data to correlate. In the next video, I'm going to uh, to talk about some other uh, extractors because what happened when you Uh, what happened when you when you go to the page and you see this kind of data? This kind of data needs to be correlated. But when you have a drop down list and you select one of the values, the value selected or the value by default, it's different from the regular expression that you're trying to match make match for all the different responses. So to have uh, a better or a fixed way to do it, we can use the post-processors CSS query. Or another one that is pretty much used is the JSON extractor because most of the mobile applications use microservice AP. Um, you need a JSON extractor to grab data from there. An XPAL extractor is for XML. Um, if you are testing web services, you can use this one to get the XPAT of the value. That's the one that I'm going to take a look deeper uh, in the next video um, because it's a, sometimes it's a pain on the ass to, to get off these values. Um, what do we have in here? Uh, as I told you, we have the results tree, the execution one. We can just clear it. Uh, we have the transactions. The transactions that we are using, we could generate the parent sample or not. Um, let's let's run it with this one and without. Uh, mainly, what happens here is uh, if you don't want to see the 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 request, the HTTP request. It will be hidden, and you're only going to see the summary of the of the of of the transaction. Uh, if you want to see it, you just unclick it, and you will see it. Um, the thing time right now for all the requests is 250 milliseconds. The thread group, and above the thread group, we have the HTTP cookie manager. Uh, the cookie manager is needed to simulate the cookies in, in a real browser. Uh, the best way to use it is to clear cookies in each, each iteration. Also, what it would be nice to have in this script is a cache, oh, sorry, is a cache manager. Why? Because also to simulate a real browser, the browser caches, the browser cache, uh, the images and styles and fonts, whatever from the page. And the storage locally and uses for later. But when we are going to run another iteration, the best way to use it is to clear the, the cache. User defined variables, you can set up some variables in here to use it later in the script. And HTTP request defaults. If you notice uh, the IP address of the page has changed it to uh, 32. Um, so if I change it in here in the request defaults and if I erase it, 
from all the requests, HTTP requests. What is going to do the HTTP request defaults is going to influence over all the HTTP requests and it's going to override this value. It's override only if it's empty. If you have something in here, it's not going to override it. Only if it's empty. For example, if the port is the, eight, the 1080 and you erase it and you set up in here, you will see that I'm just going to delete a few ones, not all of them. Or the encoding also, you can put set up the, the encoding. Um, this is like the basic to make it work your scripts. Um, if you take a look, I'm not seeing all the HTTP requests because they are encapsulated into the transaction. And the overall time that I get is the load time of the entire transaction. Okay. Well, uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Uh, have fun correlating the other uh, the other dynamic data that we have in in the web tools. Also, in your application, have fun having correlations. We're going to take a look deeper on CSS, XPAD, and JSON extractors. And we're going to see some other basic elements of the test plan and some other elements that will help us to create advanced scripting. See you soon, guys. Stay tuned.